Good morning, everyone. Uh, you join us again here at Kingfisher. Just a reminder, we're coming now to that time of year. It's uh, December, it's coming to Christmas. The biggest part of Christmas is sharing. So right down at the bottom there, click the share thing, get this video out, get it to everybody, get it to the people that need it the most. And uh, yeah, sharing is the best gift you can do. Also, while you're there, subscribe, click the bell icon, and yeah, we're good to go. So, the honeycomb ray. The scientific name, Himantura urnak. Or Bit of an interesting one there, actually Arabic, I believe. Now, there are a few possible subspecies in the honeycomb sort of genre, but the for the purpose of the video, we're just going to cover everything in one. Now, the honeycomb is probably the most beautiful ray we get on our coast. I mean, the blue ray's got its nice blue markings to it, but they angry as all hell. The honeycomb is nice. He's a fairly flattened ray, so he's not as, as bumpy as some of the other ones, like your thorn tails. And um, smooth over the top, very, very long tail. So your total length that the honeycomb grows to, that's if you include the tail, is up to six meters, which is gigantic. But the disc width, which is how we measure rays, is up to about two meters, which is also a monstrous, monstrous fish. The record, I believe, is sitting at about 118 kilos, but they are unreported or unreported uh, weights bigger than that, up to 120 odd. Um, but yeah, overall color, very large ray, normal ray shape, sharpish nose, and they've got these beautiful sort of honeycomb markings on the top, which is where they get their name from. Um, so they got that beautiful mottling pattern on the top. There are no other rays really like it, so it's a very easy one to distinguish. Also, if you ever land one, you'll know that it's honeycomb because your back will be sore for about a week afterwards. They are incredibly, incredibly strong and stubborn fish. You often get uh, honeycombs in that sort of bracket, 50 to 80 kilos. They're generally your strongest. Um, they'll come, you'll hook him, come all the way in because he wants to see who's, who's actually hooked him. And when he gets to the shore break here, he turns around and strips you right down to the drum. So, yeah, incredibly strong, incredibly stubborn. Um, beautiful, beautiful fish to catch. Back to information about it. So, East London is sort of the, the southernmost boundary, but they're really more of a tropical, subtropical species, so they're going to be up more on the KZN coast. It's at this current point in time, it's summer, so it's really the time of the year for them. Go back, watch some of the videos and the baits for them, but your general fleshy ish uh, fish baits are going to be your best thing there. Your bonnies, your honey, um, your red eyes, your mackerel, sardine, thing like that. Somebody's got a nice, soft, mushy bait that he can sort of sit on and, and, and chow. Um, mouth obviously underneath, and that's where you're going to handle them from. Do not put your fingers in the spiracles. Also, with the spike on the tail, so imagine that's the tail, the spike sits up. When he gets angry, he can actually put it up. To avoid that, you don't need to chop their tails off. You don't need to flip them on their back. Just keep them right side up. Grab your hand on the tail itself, or if you want, you can take a cloth and wrap it around the, the, the spike section of the tail. That's the easiest way, then he can whip around with his tail, he's not going to do any damage to you. In terms of handling them properly, like we said, handle in the mouth, so just keep your body low, keep him low to the ground and pull him. You don't want to lift it up like this, never ever lift a ray off the ground. It's very bad for their spines, very bad for their organs, just not good for them at all. They mostly die after that. Back to, to catching wise, you're looking for sandbanks, slightly deeper areas off of sandbanks. If you can get two sandbanks with a gutter sitting in between that runs out into deeper water, that is a prime, prime spot for them because they like sitting there, everything gets flushed out and they can just sit there and wait. Now, maturity wise, they matured about one meter disc width and it's a butterfish for about four and a half years old or so. So they're fairly slow growing. Um, they have a very long gestation period something to know they produce about three to five pups that are about 30 centimeters that's the smallest you're going to get them and that's after 12 months of gestation so they actually birth them birth them live like that it's an interesting interesting little thing they are tolerant of low salinity so you will get them coming into estuaries and harbors and things like that but they're not going to go into fresh water good job the honeycomb the countless stories of people fighting it for hours at a time my longest thing is about three and a half hours I think on honey and he was only gee, I think 85 90 kilos so it's not it's, it's a fish that if you want long long hard fights he's really the one to go for good job Nico. cheers guys